Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi everybody and thanks for joining me at the Texas Fly Fishing Report for June 29th, 2018. As you see, I've got a couple of fly rods sitting here, actually three rods here. Be sure you check out my fly rod review I did comparing three TFO rods, the BVK, the Mangrove, and the Axiom 2. Axiom 2 is a new rod to me I just picked up, and I really, really like this rod. And the review I did, which should be out about the same time as this video, will tell you the difference between these three rods and kind of the performance curve and more things about the TFO fly rods uh, in the heavier group. If you're in Texas, you know that we've had uh, some weather in the last 10 days on the Texas Gulf Coast. It's been really good to bring more water into the system on the Gulf Coast. Uh, it was pretty isolated to the Gulf Coast. Not, much coming, not as much coming out of the rivers and things like that, but it was enough to actually bring the, uh, the bay levels back to where the guys that I listened to said they thought they should be. So it also, not only did it bring the water up with all that fresh water, it also cooled it off. So they're having a resurgence right now on the Texas Gulf Coast, specifically when it comes to um, speckled trout and uh, you know fish that are heat sensitive game fish. So keep your mind on that, of course. The coast is always my favorite place to talk about. And the rest of the state is doing fairly well, although, you know, we've got a lot of heat to deal with and water levels are dropping in certain places. For me, and what I do, I, I guide for carp on Lake Ray Roberts here in North Texas. Um, it's getting a little more difficult because a lot of the vegetation is already gone that these, these fish churn and eat. And so the search is on and we're in the, the throes of a summer that's a uh, little more hot and uh, a little more difficult than the last two summers. I would say this this carp season does not compare to the last two by any stretch of the imagination. The last two were off the hook. They were unbelievable. This one is more real, like reality before that. So that's what we've got going there. Um, there is one thing that came up, and I can't remember the name of the lake. It's near Amarillo, but the, apparently this, this lake is up to now 50 foot low. So it's 50 feet low, but Apparently it's fishable now, and it has walleye. And I'll write the name of that lake on the bottom of here so you can see what it is, because I can't remember off the top of my head the name of the lake. I think it's Meredith, but I'll look it up. Anyway, that lake, I saw a little, little snippet on that, and they're catching walleye on Lake Meredith now. The only place in Texas that are stocked and catchable, fishable fish. That's, uh, you know, that's deep, deeper than a fly rod goes usually, but they do come up shallow uh, at night, in the evening and at night. So that's entirely possible that you could go to, to that lake in, near Amarillo and catch a walleye. It's very interesting. Well, I want to be short and sweet. We'll go, to the, we'll go ahead and go to the uh, scroll, which is the TPWD scroll of information about freshwater and saltwater in Texas and what's going on. You know, the analysis I have says that the lakes are settling into that summer pattern now and the coast is also kind of in that old typical summer pattern and with a couple of exceptions because of the rain that we had. Uh, I still, I have not seen anything from Port Mansfield South that turns off. It's still turned on, still going strong. I got pictures sent to me from a guy that was there doing, doing a DIY about a, a week and a half, last week I guess it was, and he caught everything. He caught speckled trout, redfish, and even sheep's head on fly. It's all on fly. So that's at Mansfield. And, and if you go on down to the South Bay, which is South, South, South Padre Island, um, inland of course, um, they have snook biting down there. Snook. Texas snook. That's a, that is like a unicorn almost. In, in line with tarpon actually. So anyway, 
Have a great weekend. July 4th is next week. We'll try to get a report to you. Time is springing up significantly after this weekend. It's the, change, the whole dynamics of what we're doing here is going to change um, to the positive and to the double positive, super positive. So it's going to be great. And uh, I hope that you guys stick around. Have a great weekend. Be careful next week. And we'll see you next week here. Check out the Texas Flycaster, www.texasflycaster.com for more details and more information about fly fishing in Texas. Don't miss the rod review. I think it'll help you if you're thinking about one of these rods and you're not wanting to spend $700, $800, or even now we're in the $1,000 range on fly rods. So these are not, but the brand names have taken another quantum leap in price. So what's happening is uh, TFO is, is still a sweet rod to get started on. You won't feel bad about spending the money if you decide you know, you don't want to fly fish or you decide you want to keep going. It's a good starting point no matter what. Either way, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Come here, come up here. Oh, <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah. Well, welcome to the show, Finny O. I guess you decided up here was okay, huh? Oh, yeah, there that goes. <laughs>